There is a difference between people who call themselves libertarians because they understand the philosophy, because they believe in the non-aggression principle, because they believe in the undeniable truth that you as a free, beautiful, independent human being own your own body, that it is morally wrong to initiate force against you, that it is a violation of your inherent rights as a human being. And then there are those, sadly, at present, greater in number, who call themselves libertarian for, I hate to say it, but yes, by comparison, relatively superficial reasons. Because it's trendy, or because it's not trendy, or for some level of social acceptance, or because they feel like that's them doing their part or they're bucking the system, or, or perhaps even... As, as I once was, as I would describe myself, an intellectual libertarian, identifying as a libertarian simply because it was, I don't want to be one of those lame Republicans or Democrats. And it seemed that, yeah, okay, I, I got the issues. Yeah, I mean, more or less. It, yeah, war. That's probably a bad idea in, in this day and age. Yeah, the, the systematic destruction of human bodies by machinery, of course, yes, war is bad no principle on which to found that understanding. Of course the drug war is immoral. Of course it should be. And of course I, I want to put what I want in my own body. I wasn't even 21 at the time, you know. Of course the idea that I couldn't drink as a, as a U.S. Marine, old enough to catch a bullet, old enough to catch a buzz, well, I still had to sneak into bars if I wanted to drink. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was bad. Yeah, I was... I was a libertarian, and I was against that. And of course, yeah, I want to keep the product of my labor. Yeah, I want to keep what I earn. I want people, yeah, people are, are better off. They're more prosperous when, when they're able to, to keep their income, when the natural incentives of the market provide a reason for them to be more productive. Yeah, okay, yeah, people are going to be happier. I'm, and for that, because I believe in economic liberty, I'm a libertarian. And... There's a problem with this broader definition of libertarian that doesn't get to the heart of what libertarianism really is. Because when you accept that anybody who simply says, well, I believe in smaller government or less government, to call themselves a libertarian, next thing you know, Glenn Beck is calling himself a libertarian on one side, and Bill Maher, who gave a million dollars to Obama's re-election campaign on the other, has used the word to describe himself. I, oh, I can't even bring myself to say Bill Maher and libertarian in the same sentence. Linos, libertarians in name only. So how did I make that change? From being a, an intellectual libertarian to being a philosophical libertarian. How did that happen? Well, when I got out of the Marines... I knew that the war was, at very least, as I understood it, not in America's best interests. But I didn't really know why I believed that. I didn't really know why that was a truly moral, proper, philosophically correct position. And I found myself in the anti-war movement as a member of Iraq Veterans Against the War, surrounded by lefties. And I knew I was right. That was really what it came down to. I'm a libertarian, and I'm right. And I got to tell you, there is something nice about being <laughs> this kind of libertarian that allows you to get away with thinking that you're right about everything. Allow me to explain, yes. But as a, as a member of Iraq Veterans Against the War, being surrounded by lefties, I, I knew that I was right. And I had to be able to prove it to them. I had to be able to explain it from first principles, from airtight arguments. That was what I wanted. I wanted airtight, rock-solid, irrefutable arguments for liberty. And that's what led me to this. It wasn't that I wanted more freedom for myself or for other people or, or honestly, at the time, even that I wanted to better the world. Of course, that motivated my involvement in politics in general. But no, I really wanted to be right. Really right. And that was what drove me to go and seek the bottom of the rabbit hole, so to speak, to seek 
consistency in my own arguments, to be able to know for myself, not for the people that I was surrounded by, but truly for myself, to know that I had exhausted every potential question of my beliefs. I had refuted every objection. I had considered every argument and had absolute confidence in what I believed and how I approached the world and how I thought about politics. And to say it that way does put it in context because that really is only a small part of it. And if you're a libertarian, if you're simply just becoming politically aware right now and wouldn't put any label on yourself, I encourage you to see past that, to see past even that ideology of libertarianism and see to a way of thinking instead. To seek the bottom of the rabbit hole. And I wish I could tell you, hey, I got to the bottom of the rabbit hole and this is what I found. But it's really not that simple. Because the only point you reach the bottom of the rabbit hole is when you realize that there is no bottom. And the only time at which you ever achieve any semblance of enlightenment is when you realize and accept that any human concept of enlightenment is impossible. Liberty. The idea that all human beings should be able to interact peacefully with respect for each other's rights, that concept of self-ownership, of the non-aggression principle, is just one conclusion of a philosophical, rational mind. Just one conclusion from applying this methodology to the issues that we see, that, that we care about as human beings today, those of us who care about these bigger social issues of politics. Rational philosophical thinking leads you to a lot of other conclusions as well. And I'd like to think that one of the greatest gifts for me of embracing this way of thinking, one of the reasons that I feel so compelled to want to share it with others, why I am motivated, is because one of the conclusions is to see the greatness in pure human will, to see the beauty in the human experience, to understand with absolute confidence the rationality of looking at the world that way. In recognizing the rationality of love. And this particular way of thinking is manifest in just one of many ways as we see it in the American freedom movement. The, the general trend towards libertarianism. This idea of people waking up in America and, and maybe first embracing the Constitution perhaps sometimes as a a ledge that keeps you from going further down the rabbit hole that leads people to study political philosophy, to read Rothbard and Mises and Hayek, Spooner, to go back and consider these issues from a different perspective, to anarcho-capitalism, to voluntarism, voluntarism, call it what you will. But the reason it is so important to embrace this way of thinking for those of us that share it is because there is a unique payoff. And it is a new way of thinking that is, I think, catching on. If I may, out of caution for myself, try to put this great phenomenon in a, in a modest concept or context. But the reason it's so important not just to convince people to call themselves libertarian, but to get them to embrace this particular way of thinking, is that, well, if your concept of libertarianism is simply your version of central planning, not a true recognition of the humility that is required to recognize and, and respect the power of the market of people acting peacefully, sometimes people go back if it's simply a shallow matter of preference. But when you get libertarianism as a matter of absolute truth through deep philosophical examination and rational thinking, you never go back. Lord, help. <laughs>
Oh shit, I'm nine inches away from your crotch and I'm feeling your penis. <laughs>